Well, the whole chain is what matters. Throwing out the line again can easily take 20 minutes. Wrong information will cost money. And they don't use the correct material, that somebody gets injured. We can easily speed up the process by half an hour. Time is money. A, a good mooring plan is vital. When you hear all that, you realize that things don't always go smoothly. And that's not really surprising when you consider behind the simple sentence, a vessel brings a cargo to a port, lies a whole world, a complex chain with very many links. In the past, people in the port used to have a nautical background. If they didn't have this nautical background, they got it anyway, as there was sufficient time to swap experiences during visits on board. Now the number of people in the port with a nautical background is getting smaller and smaller. On top of that, they've not time anymore to swap experiences, as the vessels spend less and less time in port. Especially nowadays, the mutual understanding between the people in the port and on board the vessels is getting increasingly important, as vessels are getting larger and the need for shorter stay in port is getting bigger. The system usually works well. The question is, can it be improved? Because it's usually the little things that go wrong. Each time a small detail, but add them all up. An example. This vessel has to wait for the pilot for an hour because the voyage planning was based on outdated information on the tidal windows of the port. When the port plan was adjusted for pilot, tugs, terminals, boatmen, etc., to the updated ETA, it turned out that the vessel had to berth on the port side instead of the starboard side to a different manifold. All the deck preparations had to be redone. Another half hour. All added up, an hour and a half. Cost thousands of dollars. And then we still haven't considered all the vexation, extra fuel, extra emissions, etc. There is a great deal to win on all these fronts. How? Well, by having a good look at all the links in the chain and how the connections can be strengthened. The chain of all the partners who are involved in the vessel's cargo and voyage in bringing it into port, docking and loading and unloading in the ports. The aim of this film, awareness, better understanding and best practices. The whole chain revolves around the vessel and the cargo to be transported. The traders and shipping planners work on the basis of information from ports and terminals. It all starts with data provided by the harbour master. For example, data on the port entrance, the exact depth, currents, terminal capacity. The information is provided to various parties who request it. Publishers of nautical charts and books, shipping agents, etc. For example, the United Kingdom Hydrographic Office. It supplies this information in charts and books. This information about ports and terminals is crucial to visiting ships. Ideally, for each port, this data should be obtained from a single source, such as the Port Information Guide. The reliance we place on other parties is, is considerable, but in a way it's in their own advantage that they give us accurate information because the confidence of the mariner going into a port is built hugely on all the little things that he needs to know before he goes in. And if those early things look good, then he's going to have confidence in his berthing operations. And for vessels which are unfamiliar on unfamiliar territory, then it's really quite important that those things are right.
Traders and shipping planners use all this information to decide how much cargo can go to which port and terminal with which vessel. When in doubt about the exact depth of the port, they work with a safety margin in order to ensure sufficient underkill clearance. Coming in with a draft of 50 meters, eh, as advised by maybe authorities that it is possible. But in the end, it comes out that uh, only the maximum draft will be 14.9. Um, it can cause uh, a loss in, in cargo to be loaded or to be discharged. And in the end, there will be more costs or more income for the, uh, for the charters or for the, uh, the time charters. So it's very important for us to provide these this parties, all the parties concerned, with the exact information. An average tanker, such as an Aframax. If the trader employs an extra safety margin of 15 centimeters on top of the normal underkeel clearance, that means $37,800 less cargo. And then we're still only talking about one vessel. Just think how much cargo a port can miss out on in this way. With, for example, 1,000 vessels, that's 1,000 times 1,350 tonnes, or 1 1.3 million tonnes. That's why up-to-date port and terminal data is so important. Therefore, the IHMA site is a great initiative with complete up-to-date information in a standardized format. The link between shipper, vessel and port is often the agent. He is familiar with the local situation and coordinates the contacts between vessel or ship owner and pilots, tugs, the terminal, customs, etc. This is work for which accurate and reliable information is a must both from the vessel and from the port and terminal. It is strange that we have to scrap our data from uh, certain parties and that within these parties uh, the data which we are receiving differs from person to person. Well, to all the ports and terminals, uh, I would ask for your help in completing the database and completing the information and getting it into this single window. I think that is the way to go. Standardization and everything, I think, is the way to go. For the master, exact planning to the pilot station is important for calculating the most efficient speed. For this planning, he needs the exact tidal windows and terminal planning information. This forms the basis for voyages that are both safe and efficient and affects fuel consumption and emissions. A small difference in speed means a big difference in bunker consumption. Two vessels are going from Gibraltar to Rotterdam. One travels at 15 knots, the other one, with the right information, 12 knots. The difference? 80 tons, or approximately $35,000. That's 250 tons less CO2 a considerable sum, and then we're still not taking into account the costs of waiting if the vessel arrives outside the tidal window because the data wasn't completely correct. So for this vessel, a delay of six hours costs a total of approximately $10,000.